tātou katoa, nau mai haere mai ki te whakātiranga e pāna ki ngā hurihanga o te mana tohu mātauranga o Aotearoa. NCA is changing and it is becoming more accessible. If you think your daughter requires special assessment conditions such as having a reader writer, being able to use a computer, having extra time during assessments as well as rest breaks and separate accommodation, then NZQA will start to embed these changes into the assessments so all students will have access to it if they need to. These changes apply to both internal and external assessments, but some conditions still require the NZQA sign-off. If you feel that you need more support for your daughter, please feel free to contact Mr Mitchell or your daughter's dean. The second change is creating equal status for Mātauranga Māori. This encourages more authentic learning and creates a more relatable environment for Māori learners. Teachers can do this by incorporating kupu Māori, tikanga and Māori philosophy into their lessons and way of teaching. Examining whose narrative is visible in our curriculum and maintaining a system of fairness is our focus too. This includes ensuring academic pathways are open for Akunga Māori by removing barriers. Students are now able to take part in fewer assessments in order to get the necessary credits to achieve their NCI certificates. Less assessments provides more time for learning. As a result, students will have significantly more learning opportunities in each subject and therefore have more time to delve into their learning. For students starting in 2024 being phased in from level 1 to level 3, assessment standards in each course will appear as two internals and two externals, which is significantly more manageable for the goals of our school. Change 4 of NCA is to strengthen literacy and numeracy requirements and assessments. With an increased focus on literacy and numeracy requirements, across the curriculum, students will gain skills that are essential in everyday work, life and education. Girls will increase their learning of literacy and numeracy across all of their subjects, not just within their English and Math classrooms. Year 10 students will sit the CAA, the Common Assessment Activity, at one of the two points during the year on both numeracy and literacy. Students will be chosen by their teacher's judgement as well as their PAT scores to ensure they'll be as ready as possible for the CAA. If a student fails their first attempt, they can keep attempting it until they are successful. Teachers will embed core skills into both Year 9 and 10 subjects to ensure all students are fully prepared for the CAA. Change 5 is to simplify NCEA structure. In our new system, students need 60 credits for each level of their NCEA certificate. In addition to these 60 credits, students also need to gain their Literacy and Numeracy CAA. Usually students study 5 to 6 subjects each year, each offering around 15 credits. Therefore, most students are entered into a 75 to 90 credit program. To gain endorsement in a subject, students need 14 credits in either a merit or excellence level. To gain NCA certificate endorsement, students need 50 credits or more in either merit or excellence level in one school year. Change 6 is to ensure clearer pathways to further education and work. At HGHS, our careers department provides clear pathways to further education and work by working with individuals to explore possible career and vocational pathways. They then match experiences and opportunities to explore this further. Some of these opportunities include Gateway, Waikato Trades Academy and Taster Days with Wintech and NZMA among others. If students are interested, they need to keep an eye on the careers notices through the HHS careers Instagram or Facebook pages and the student daily notices. Our final change surrounds NCEA Level 1 being made optional. While some schools have decided to make NCEA Level 1 a part of their optional curriculum, Hamilton Girls High School is keeping it compulsory as we believe that not only does it introduce students to NCEA in a friendlier way, but also allows for more specialised options later on. For example, a student taking Level 1 Commerce can then branch out into Level 2 Accounting, Agribusiness, Business Studies or Economics. This provides a taste of a potential career path without having to specialise too early. In relation to NCEA, some frequently asked questions we get are, what do I do if I miss an assessment? You may be assessed later or granted an extension if you apply to Martin Mitchell within a week of the absence or incident occurring and provided you have the correct evidence. This evidence could be if you've applied to Deputy Principal Craig Scrimmager for justified leave. This includes a tangi or a funeral which takes you out of school for four days or more. An email from your caregiver is required in this situation. If you're sick for four days or more, a medical certificate is required, but if it's four days or less, an email from your caregiver is okay. If you have COVID, a text from the Ministry of Health acknowledging the reported case of COVID is required. Another situation is if you're on an HGHS extracurricular activity which is on the school calendar. 
The next question is, how do I apply for special assessment conditions? Students with significant learning or physical issues may apply for special assessment conditions for their assessments. These special assessment conditions may include reader assistant, writer assistant, computer assistant, enlarged papers, extra time, separate accommodation or a combination of the above. To apply for consideration of special assessment conditions, contact Martin Mitchell. In addition to NCA changes at HJHS this year, we are reminding students in Fano that we are a BYOD school. This means that students are required to bring their laptops or Chromebooks to school each day. Devices are starting to be used more and more during class. This includes more online-based activities and assessments. Students will also be required to use their devices for NZQA assessments. Companies like PV Tech have financial options if you would like to spread payments out over a period of time. If your daughter is unable to have a device, please contact her dean to find out about alternative options. Our school's phone policy previously just covered years 9 to 11, but following the new government's Phones and in Schools initiative has been extended to include year 12s and 13s also. Because phones aren't a learning device, they're expected to be off and in the student's bag for the entirety of the school day. A useful way you can track your daughter's progress in school is through the Kmart Parent Portal. The Parent Portal can be accessed through the school website. Once there, you can view and track your daughter's progress in all areas of school, such as her attendance, school reports and NCA results. The Details tab is an important section to check you and your daughter's contact details. You can update and edit any details to your contacts if there has been a change. You can also view and download your daughter's school reports via the Reports tab, as well as track her academic results within their chosen class through the Results menu. If your daughter has just started NCA, you're able to track her NCA results and how many credits she has through the NCA Summary tab. From here, you can acknowledge areas your daughter may need extra help with, as well as acknowledge areas she is thriving in, and continue to find ways to support and strengthen her learning. You can also track your daughter's attendance, which is vital for excelling in school life. It is worth logging on and familiarising yourself with this portal, as it is beneficial for both you and your daughter. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact your daughter's dean. Ngā mihi nui kia koutou i mātuki mai ana i tēnei wā. Mena hei pātai atu au tuku karede mai ki te kura, awa mātou koe e awhina ai. Ka kiti anō, 